I think that the, the one wedge issue that we've had in palliative care over the last several years has been pain. Because people with, will argue with you about treatment, you know, whether, whatever the disease is, but nobody's gonna argue that people should suffer in pain. So it's like, nobody argues against it, but there's not enough action. And that's where the gap is. You know, how you get people that are in, in positions of authority to really respond to that. We have enormous barriers. That's our uh, Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act of India. About 1,400 odd pages. I don't have to say anything more about it. In their effort to implement the single convention on narcotic drugs, some countries have misinterpreted the single convention and adopted regulations and laws that are overly restrictive and actually hinder access to the medical and scientific needs. In India, when I wanted to bring in oral morphine, I tried to find out how to go about accessing it. I found a maze that was impossible to get into. It took me more than a year to find out what's the proper way of submitting an application. Because no one seemed to know. And once you get there, there, are, there were so many different departments involved. And if in the whole scheme of things, one person objects to something, everything gets held up. It's really difficult to change uh, these laws and regulations in some of these countries. You literally have to get every ministry within the government to agree to do it. Uh, typically, the uh, law enforcement uh, justice ministries are the diff most difficult. Because of the abuse of prescription drugs, the cancer patient is being an extraordinary victim in this, with heightened controls placed on access to those medicines for patients who are in terrible pain. Most Latin American countries have similar problems, so they are very, they were very concerned about control and diversion, but they didn't uh, realize the importance of having those medicines available for pain relief. When I meet with ministers of health, they, you know, first of all, they're all surprised because they never knew this was true. So, you know, that's one step. You have to at least tell them this is a problem. In the first two to three meetings I had with them, then we worked together and they become, became aware of the problem and I presented them some cases where the patients suffered a lot of pain and more pain trying to get their medicines. Uh, they, they were aware and they were willing to do something. You know, I don't think these are bad people. They just don't know. And then it's not only that they don't know, but they don't know what to do. So then you sort of have to walk them through what they can do. I think where the challenge lies is when they are competing priorities. And, you know, who's to say what's more important? You know, childhood immunization, for example, maternal health care, um, pain relief, they're all equally important. We don't want to be placed in an either-or situation, you know. Well, I'm either going to give um, uh, cancer treatment and oncology treatment, radiation therapy, or it's palliative care. It's always slowed down by changes in the Ministry of Health. I mean, we have one country at the present time that every paper is ready to be signed and the government's changed. So it's going to be re-educating the new government. So these, these are the, the, the difficulties that we see facing us, but not, um, not a will on the part of you know, champions to do this, and not necessarily a, you know, a lack of will on the part of governments to make changes. I think it's about saying that um, you know, as human beings, that we should not be able to stand by and watch people suffer when we have the tools to, to relieve that suffering. And I think it's as basic as that.